Well, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, whatever. We give it up. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is the Sunday show. It is March 12th, 2023, and I will wake up. I've begun drinking coffee. That's probably what just happened here. This is the Sunday show, the show where we take calls about theism, religion, spirituality, and the like. I'm Jimmy Snow, joined once again by the wonderful, the illustrious, the I'm done with adjectives. Did you fix, Matt, find somebody else to do the show with you? Yeah, there we go. Matt, how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm uh, not. I've been I'm, playing ahead, bad chess for the last hour, but yeah, I'm doing all right. Matt, can I ask a question? What what actually does illustrious mean? It's a, I think I just used a word that I'm not positive on what it means. I just know it's usually used as a compliment. Um. Well, I'm a, I only know it as as a lauded thing that which I think it I think it maybe stems from luster shiny, uh, and so I, I think I'd have to look that here. I Let's just just did. look it up. I just did. Well known, respected, and admired for past achievements. Not only did I not know that, I now know that that is actually the perfect compliment, and I stand by yeah. the use of it. Uh, it, was, it was the right word. I like it. I like that one. Uh, a couple of announcements, but then we're honestly going to jump. I, now I want to know the etymology. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm going to look few, that up. Well, well, Matt looks that up. A couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, we have a new Patreon goal announcement, one that I was only pretty excited for, and now I'm getting some feedback on and I'm very excited for. There is going to be, if we hit 500 patrons this month, we're about 350, so we need about 150 new people. Patreon.com slash call the line. Uh, and it starts at $5 a month. Your money goes to, honestly, expanding programming. Uh, we're currently working on the podcast format. We're also going to be working on being able to stream the show to vertical format places, places that a lot of the conversations are happening that we should be at to raise awareness of the way, uh, 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 to raise awareness of the channel and the shows and certain shows uh, I feel like that should be ridiculously popular that aren't. But anyway, so we have a new Patreon goal. If we hit 500... Lower your expectations. No one else is going to physically change their appearance. But we are going to do a Matt Dillahunty bracket chess tournament where only people on page, whether or not we stream it out to everyone is one thing, but only people on Patreon can uh, enter. And the, the, the gimmick of this one is that it's going to be bracket style, but the first bracket will be every, every single person who enters will get to play Matt in the first round. And then the brackets continue on that way, which means Matt automatically will advance, presumably, unless every single person beats him uh, to the final rounds. And then we will that's have prizes awesome. for that. Yeah. You know, six, if you lose 64 times in a row, that's just bad luck at a certain point. Um, anyway, I don't know. I'm pretty bad. I'm very excited for for it now. Uh, it's going to be enjoyable, but we do have to hit 500. We will broadcast the whole thing somewhere. Uh, how we do that is still up in the air. But uh, if we hit 500 before the month is over, that'd be that. So patreon.com slash call the line. Help us expand our programming. It, the, the biggest thing that helps is Patreon. Despite the fact that people can still cancel, Patreon income is more reliably consistent that we can we can make decisions based upon an expectation of only a certain amount of fluctuation, uh, whereas YouTube is a hellscape. Uh, second announcement either on right now in the live chat you can vote either on march 26th or april 2nd we are going to do a long episode like we did for my birthday however this one we will start early instead of going late we'll be starting it at 1 p.m uh that can either be happening on march 26th not this sunday not next or not next sunday but the following or april 2nd which would be the sunday after that for matt's birthday which is on the 31st Go in in there and vote for that. Other than that, I don't think I have any other announcements. Do you have any you'd like to? No more announcements. I know. How can you give up on announcements like that? I mean, I announcements are the bread and butter, the life force of the channel, and you're just giving up on them. And they're totally not the thing that most people are like, all right, get to calls. I'm not even really listening. Uh, they're not that thing at all. Uh, you got anything? You got any debates or anything this week? No, actually, I was supposed to do a debate yesterday. Unfortunately, I was feeling um, not well yep. and uh, decided to take the day off and enjoy it, which is great when you can. It's not always great when the reason isn't uh, 
you know, hey, I'm not, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I did get some work done. I've, you know, primarily yesterday's uh, w- was about having uh, bad blood sugar uh, readings and trying to find a way to not feel terrible. And uh, I found a way and it worked out fairly easily and fairly quickly. And so I was, I was glad about that. I actually went out and got uh, work done in the yard. Hell yeah. So, oh yeah. Yeah. Taking care of the tree. Yeah. I basically took the chainsaw out, chopped off the rest of the top of the willow tree in the backyard, then chopped it up in little bits, put as much as I could in the compost bin. Um, but also, I mean, we had a lot of work that needed to be done. Uh, there's still stuff in the backyard out there to do. There's also, we fed 20, 29 snakes today. Um, so more than half of the collection. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, sure, sure. I, I have, there are, oh, I do have an announcement, I guess. And that's because I mentioned on here that I pulled out of a conference in, uh, Canada, uh, in, I think it's Sarnia, just like across the water from Detroit or something. Um, I am back in that conference. Um, I'm really glad that the problem that several of us had, uh, they were just trying to be, you know, hey, let's build our community and let's work cooperatively. And they worked with a Catholic charity, which in their mind was uh, run secularly by a board of directors and was Catholic in name only. Unfortunately, the Catholic charity also um, opposed made medical assistance in dying and other things like that, which means they're using Catholic doctrine to oppose uh, secular medical treatment. And because of that, because my my wonderful friend, Ed Brayton, um, who took his own life a few years ago, medically related, not just, um, but after he suffered for a long time, he had that option. And Dave Warnock and I are both gonna be speaking there. Dave may need that option, I may need that option, but even if I didn't, it's against my humanist principles. So I said, I can't participate. Well, the organizers sat down and talked about it um, after hearing from several people, and they've decided to not work with that particular char- charity and uh, to work with other charities because they just want to have the best conference. And so I'm excited to say that I will actually in August be at Baja Con. I've got to get my passport renewed. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, awesome. I won't be at the American Atheist uh, National Convention here Easter weekend, which is coming up in three weeks, four weeks. Um, un- unfortunately, things the world has conspired to make me unavailable that weekend. And it's always sad because I try to go to every one of the American Atheist Conventions since since like 2010 in Iowa or something like that. I think I've missed one or two, um, but I will definitely miss this year. It's in Phoenix and go to atheistsplural.org. Uh, it's always hard for me to say that. I can say atheist.org, but it's atheists.org atheists, yeah. uh, for more information on that. At least but I yeah, know you spell know. it with the E before the I, unless, unlike... Yeah. So many people on the internet who will say, like, I've been an atheist for 40 years and I still haven't figured out how to spell it. Uh, that's the, I see those types of comments all the time. I did. I'm sorry for prematurely quitting on the announcements. I did think of one more. Hey, let us know in the description. We're, we're about to create a series of graphics that you can share in different places on different social groups and stuff. Uh, they're going to be sort of pull tab, take a tab, call the show style things that we want people to be encouraged to share in different places to say, like, you should be calling these shows. Uh, so in the comments, not in the live chat, because I'm not going to see, I'm not going to go back and read all the live chat. In the comments after the show, if you have suggestions for places you think that those graphics should end up, things that you think should be included on the graphics, whatever suggestions, we're going to be listening to those types of things. Because we want, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot that we do rely on the audience for already, obviously our viewership, and then there's Patreon and stuff. And another thing that that we would make a big difference is if our audience uh, felt motivated to appropriately go and post the show in different places and send the challenges to different people. Again, we never suggest you do it as a trick, as a like, ha ha, gotcha. You know, when people say that, when I tell people like, tell your theist family to call us, I don't mean secretly trick them into it. You can let them know what show it is, but I want to, I want to talk to more theist racist uncles and all those sorts of family members of our audience and and the like. So let us know those things too. But without any other further ado, unless you've got anything else, Matt, I say we jump into calls. Yeah. By the way, I want to I make this clear. Uh, 
So there's stuff going on in chat, which I always like to have fun. And somebody typed typical atheist, but they, they spelled it T-Y-P-O. And I, my understanding was that that was intentional. And so they were talking about the sort of, you know, like maybe something typical about atheists. And I thought it would be funny to do the thing that we typically get associated <laughs> with, which is to correct the spelling. And of course, somebody's immediately like, I think that was intentional. Mine was too. I was making a joke. I'm sorry that the joke missed somebody. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm going to, I'm going to answer this call and I'm going to preamble real quick before, cause Matt, I don't think you've met this individual yet. Clark, I'm going to tell you two things before we get started. One, if you use an ableist slur again, it will be instant hang up. Two, you need to come here with the re the realization that we only have our reality to assess. So any assertion like I don't accept your uh, uh, your view of time or however you put it will also be rejected. Do you understand, Clark? Yeah, I understand. Go on then. Hey, Clark, how you doing? Yeah, so I'm gonna be arguing. Oh, good. How are you? Um, I'm all right. So I'm going to be arguing that the mind and the brain are ontologically distinct. But first, I just wanted to clarify something with you, Matt. By the way, it's an honor. I, I hope you're uh, taking care of your health. Um, I just wanted to know, so on your worldview, the brain is not designed. So essentially what you're saying is that I can trust my brain because my brain tells me I can trust it. So my question is, how do you escape this viciously circular, self-defeating, begging the question worldview without appealing to your brain? Because even if you say you can uh, demonstrate or test it with any other brain, then you're still using your brain and we're back to the same problem. Boy, that's a lot of stuff, including a lot of attempts to poison the well by asserting all kinds of things about a position that I haven't asserted and what that position means. So let me make this uh, pretty much clear. Um, I have no problem with the, with the notion that the mind and the brain uh, can be viewed as separate things. For me, the mind is what the brain does. The things that we attribute to the mind uh, being functions of the brain. And so it doesn't. I don't care that they're distinct. But I also haven't asserted that the brain isn't designed. What my position is, is that there isn't sufficient evidence to warrant reaching the conclusion that a brain is intelligently designed or designed intentionally. Um, but when I don't trust my brain merely because my brain tells me to, that's not the foundation of my epistemology or anything else. Um, as a practical matter, I can't solve the problem of hard solipsism. So I have to uh, just pragmatically begin with an unjustified assumption that I experience a reality and I'm going to interact with it and that what I'm the information that I'm getting the sense data that I'm getting can be verified independently by other people I can't prove there are other minds but those other minds um, as a matter of you know, practical assumption I it, it makes more sense to me to say I live in a world with you otherwise I'm just sitting here talking to myself so I don't merely trust my brain, I know, in fact, that my brain can be fooled and deceived. We know about optical illusions, auditory illusions. We know that we can fail in our reasoning. And so it is reason uh, and the foundations of reason with things like identity, non-contradiction, excluded middle, which are the, um, the presuppositions that sit as a foundation for logical reasoning. And after that, it becomes a process of applying logical reasoning in syllogistic, you know, in, with propositional logic and syllogistic form, because we know the true premises lead to true conclusions, and using inference and induction, as with science, etc., to come up with the uh, best current models that fit the current data, and all of those positions are held tentatively. So I'm not merely believing my brain because my brain says so. I am pragmatically and practically forced to reach conclusions and to rely on the best methods that consistently produce reliable results. And as far as I can tell, the scientific methods, applied reason and an evaluation of the available data, and including things like peer review, independent confirmation from what appear to be other minds, is the single most consistently reliable method to produce not truth, because science doesn't do capital G truth, but produce models that are both useful, productive, and seem to be consistent with the reality that I experience. Does that make sense? It does. So just to clarify, you change, you did change your position from, you used to hold uh, before that uh, your brain is not designed to obtain truth. So you're, are you changing your position on that? Okay. So now, now we're, we're showing that you weren't listening because you asserted the first time that I claimed my brain wasn't designed. That is not what I've claimed. 
And now you're trying to say that I claimed my brain wasn't designed to identify truth. My position is that brains who model the internal model of reality, brains with an internal model of reality that is closer, that is more accurate with respect to the reality that, that exists, um, are more likely to survive. If you, you know, if you can't perceive the dangers in the world, you are more likely to die. And so while our brain isn't intentionally designed and isn't uh, even necessarily tweaked by evolution necessarily to, to identify truth, the brains that are better at accurately monitoring the world are the ones that are more likely to survive. And so our brains don't produce truth. Our brains produce thoughts which are either consistent with reality or they're not. And the ones that are more consistent with reality are the ones that are more likely to survive, thrive, and procreate. Great. So the answer would be that they're, that they're not designed to obtain truth. We can grant all that other talk about modeling no. reality and whether no. or not they're, they're more no. apt to survive. No. They're not designed to no. obtain truth and we're back no. to the problem. No, 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 no. Stop talking. I'm glad you're having you the same problem. You don't get to paraphrase my position and say that the answer is that they're not designed for truth. That is not what I said. There's a, would you recognize that there's a difference between asserting that they are not designed for truth and whether or not they are capable of, of, of attaining and holding truth? All I, my position isn't that they aren't designed. My position isn't that they aren't designed for truth. Design needs to be demonstrated. Is my brain capable of reaching conclusions which are by all measures available consistent with reality? Yes. And that means my brain is capable of truth of, of identifying truth. The design thing doesn't need to be included in there at all. What, what is one of those? I'm not measures? asserting that it wasn't designed. What is one? So stop saying, stop saying that my position is that it wasn't what, what designed. What is one of those measures? When I've repeated, stop. When I've repeatedly said that's not the case. Continue. So what is one of the measures by which you can do that? Would you say perception or observation? Well. Perception is a broad-based term, as is observation. So the data that I get, the data that I receive, um, is the only thing that I have that I can assess. It's the only thing anybody, as far as I can tell, has that they can assess. And so we view the consequences of our actions um, with respect to goals in order to evaluate them. That's it. Now, now you're just begging the question again. You're using senses to justify your senses. Holy shit, Clark, you're so bad. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I'm not begging the question. Work, sir. Shut the fuck up for a second. I'm not begging the question. You don't get to accuse me of a fallacy when I haven't made an argument. You asked me for my position on something. I'm giving you my position. If you don't understand the basics between constructing an argument that would be fallacious and responding to a question about what your position is, we are not going to have a good conversation. You are not listening and you are not interested in actually understanding the position. You think you're going to come in here and do a gotcha catch me on it. And you're not. You're going to fail. You are failing as we speak. Can confirm, Clark does not understand the basics. I'm sorry, sir, sir, do you know what an inference rule is? Wait, I'm sorry, sir, do you know what an inference rule is? That's what's implied by the notion that you're presenting, that there is a, an entailment there. there. There's a deductive inference that you're making. So, yeah, that's no, what's implied. It's a, that no, it's an inductive, it's an inductive process. It's an inductive process, not a deductive one. And I didn't construct a propositional logical syllogism, which would be required in order for you to point to a fallacy. You asked me what my position was, and I told you what my position was. I did not present an argument for it. Now you're just begging the question again because no, you're sir. presuming no, that the sir. content of your perception. <laughs> All right, now you're muted. If I haven't presented an argument, I cannot be begging the question. Accuse me of a fallacy again that you cannot demonstrate, and you will be done. I'm going to unmute you now. You I'd love watch. to have a conversation with you, no, but you, you seem to be an arrogant prick who only wants to come in and make assertions about what my position is and what's wrong with it, and then go to fallacies. I've sat here and nicely answered your question and corrected you because you got it wrong at every turn from repeatedly using the word design to now accusing me of fallacies when in fact I have not presented an argument. It's not circular reasoning. It's not question begging for me to point out that as a matter of pragmatism, 
the only information that I have is my senses. And as far as I can tell, that's the only information you or anyone else has is things that you receive from your senses. Everything you hear from another person, every other person who could be out there doing peer review is all part of your sense information. As I pointed out originally, I have no solution to the problem of heart solipsism. I'm not aware that anybody else does either. And the foundations of logic are presuppositions. So you don't get to claim that I'm using circular reasoning about sense data when I'm not. Please try again, and I'd love to have a conversation, but you are really fighting on this instead of actually listening to what's been said. Try again. Yeah, so we can just move on with your claim there about sense perception. So the content of sense perception I take to be some immediate non-inferential uh, content that's presenting itself to you. And my question to you is, because based on what you've said, it seems like what's implied is that that content does not stand in relation to conceptual or propositional content. So do you think it does? And if so, can you demonstrate that? I, I don't understand your question. It seemed that you just asked me about the content of sense perception and how it relates to sense perception. Could you, could you rephrase that? No, so I'm, I'm asking about the content of sense perception, which I take to be non-inferential. I'm asking if that content stands in direct relation to propositional content. To propositional content, because if you rewind, that is not what you said. See, you're in, you're in such a hurry that you're, you're, you're using the word perception when you meant propositional. Just so you know, this is the sublation guy. That's fine. Wait, I, I said conceptual or propositional content. I'm using those interchangeably. I'm Is sorry, but I didn't say, uh, I didn't say. Uh, what is your question? Okay, maybe since you're not tracking, we can just recap. So the issue is that the dilemma here, Matt, is that, first of all, I think your rational faculties are a bit distorted because of, of your collection. Goodbye. Goodbye. Listen to me very closely, Clark, you arrogant little prick. Um, you don't get to, to, to say stuff and accuse me of not tracking and then say that my, essential, uh, that my uh, reasoning abilities are somehow uh, faulty. Either you are going to have an actual grown-up discussion where we can discuss this, because I'll put it to you right now, there's not a single problem with my epistemology that is in any way solved by appealing to a god. Gods are just an assertion. They don't do anything else. I've, I've answered your questions over and over again until you got to a point where you were talking past yourself and said perception twice, and one of those times you said it when you meant propositional. I'm going to give you one last chance. Instead of preaching your little fucking sermon, you can ask me a question, and we can try to define something and try to discuss it, or I can move on to another caller. You Your should choice. hear him try to defend Christianity. Mute. Yeah, does perceptual content stand in direct relation to propositional content? Does perceptual content stand in direct relation to propositional content? I don't know what that means. So again, what I mean, uh, what I'm taking to be um, how we characterize sense data is some sort of immediate content that's non-conceptual, that's somehow given to us non-inferentially. And so what I'm basically asking is that if it's something that's just immediately given without any sort of inference, and as you said, this is all we have to go by, or any justification, then I don't see how this is a tenable position because there's no epistemic justification. And that just follows analytically based on how it's defined. Sense data is just sort of an immediate non-conceptual state and if it's conceptual, if it's non-conceptual rather and immediate, and it doesn't enter into justification, yeah. then, then in principle it can't be justified. What's your response? What's my response? You're asking, you're, you're asserting that sense data isn't conceptual. So what we're saying is the information that appears to be arriving in my brain isn't conceptual? Oh my God, no. What I'm saying is that it's non-inferential. Well, you said non-conceptual. Here's, yeah, yeah, here's, it's, here's it's what we should do. Uh, right. yeah, but it stands in relation to conceptual content. Is the point? I'm yes. wanting to know. If I don't understand what I don't understand what you're saying. You're you're clearly way smarter than me and everybody else on the planet. So put it together in an email and send it in. Because the thing that you're objecting to, um, I've already acknowledged. I'm not aware of any solution to the problem of hard solipsism. Are you aware of one? 
It has nothing to do with the conversation. And just to clarify, I, I, you know, no, no, Clark, 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 that Clark it's my turn to ask a question. <laughs> you're <laughs> either going to answer it honestly or I will ban you from the show. Do you have a solution to hard solipsism? Uh, I don't know what that is. Whoa. Okay. Holy hard solipsism shit. is the notion that we can't we can't demonstrate that other minds exist essentially that's the easiest way to do it i don't know whether i don't have a way to show that you are anything other because all i have is my sense data to rely on and while it's telling me that you and i exist in a world i don't know that i'm not for example a brain in a bat a vat being fed a, a reality in which case you are a fictional construct i'm not aware of any solution to that problem um and since you don't know what it is, wait—is that a proposition that we don't know that, that we don't know hey, that other minds exist? Is Clark, that a shut the fuck up. Let Matt Clark, finish. You just said you don't know what it was, so I explained it to you. You're, if you think you're going to solve it in the span of time that it took me to explain it to you, then you are not—you're not remotely qualified to be having this conversation because this is a serious problem that serious philosophers have dealt with. Now, setting aside hard solipsism, we now go to the issue of everything that I know about the world comes through my senses. How do I know how reliable my senses are? The only method that I have for determining the reliability of my senses is to set aside the problem of hard solipsism, begin with the assumption that you and I share a reality, and then seek out your input to be like, do you see that as well? Is your description of what I'm seeing or hearing or engaging with, is it similar to mine? And this is, what we, this is why science relies on independent confirmation. Otherwise, it might just be a delusion. I might have, you know, how do I tell whether or not something's an optical illusion, a delusion, whether there's something wrong with my brain? And so this is where we get other individuals to view it. That becomes one of the key aspects of verifying the reliability of my senses. I can tell whether or not I'm colorblind, even if, I'm, even if I am a brain of that, by taking a test on that. And we can show blind people that other people can in fact see and we can show colorblind people that, in fact, other people can see the colors that they can't see. We're so good at being able to identify when brains aren't working correctly that we can demonstrate this to people whose brains aren't working correctly. That is the process as close to it, 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 it we have for verifying the reliability of senses. If we're doing that, do you have some better way to do it other than independent confirmation from other people to say, yes, this is what we're all seeing. Yes, this is what we're all hearing. Do you have another way to verify the reliability of someone's senses? Yeah, we, uh, we appeal to eidetic universals and we do uh, phenomenological reduction in terms of methodology. But the issue with what you're saying is that science, evidence specifically with regards to uh, these theories to theory succession, it's, it's utterly meaningless. It's meaningless artwork as a methodology. And so science is not going to be sublating in any way. It's just going to be constantly well, recursively negating sublate. in virtue of this body of knowledge, not sharing meaning across the paradigms. So that's the issue. You're, not, you're just presuming this notion that science is virtuous. I'm saying, no, it's non-virtuous. You need to demonstrate no, that sir. it's an entailment. No, know. sir. No, sir. I, I, you can toss out as much language as you want. We've already established that you don't know what the problem of hard solipsism is, so you have mm -hmm. a very narrow understanding. And the question here was, do you have a better way to demonstrate the reliability of senses? And your answer was that you could use eidetic universals. Well, that doesn't leave... It, like, if you're the only mind and you have nobody else to, to compare it to, eidetic universals, uh, you can't tell the distinction between deception, delusion, and actual data, factual, accurate data. That's not how this works. So you haven't solved a problem at all. You've just managed to talk yourself in circles into pretending that you've solved a problem when you haven't. All of us have our but sense Matt, data. Matt, like, the issue is that I'm Clark, still under fucking comments. talking, Clark. All of us get all of the information about the world through our senses, correct? Not at all. Nope. There are certain. You're, you're so full of it. Okay, we're done. We're wait, done. Wait, 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 don't say it. Don't, 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 Hey, Clark. You have my blood pressure, Clark, Matt. Clark, I've, I've, I've muted you. No one gives a fuck what you're. No, no, no. Stop. Everybody, shut the fuck up. I do not have mm -hmm. high blood pressure, Clark, and my medical issues are none of your fucking business. I've never really suffered from high blood pressure. Why on earth would you even bring that up now, you piece of shit? 
I've still got a mute. Clark, you also called last time and said that the reason why I wasn't engaging with your self fart smelling arguments uh, was because I was a slow boy who didn't understand basic philosophical arguments. That was your assertion. And then yeah, just like, revealed I'm, I'm that you don't aren't even aware of a first semester, fourth week on the syllabus discussion of hard solipsism. You have shown yourself to be a word salad fraud every step of the way. And last time when we discussed Christianity, and I just tried to get you to say whether or not you believe as a literal point of history that Jesus was resurrected in the past, you denied that my perception of the passage of time is real, that the concept of it happening in the past was somehow silly. You are a fraud. I will now unmute you. You word sal well, the words I was going but to use. First thing, me. when he unmutes you, yeah. The first thing I want to know is why are you bringing up false information about my blood pressure? It's it's not false. You're overweight. Goodbye, so you is, fucking jackass. You are not my online. doctor. You are not a doctor. You are not my doctor. You don't know what my blood pressure vegan. is. You, you are the vegan. most really dishonest unhealthy. person, and you are now fucking banned from the show, you little you bitch. Go, you should go vegan. <laughs> ah, there what it is. Fraud. I need to go vegan. That's what he's so pissed off about. That's why he's going to fucking word salad and talk about this is that I should go vegan. This guy is absolutely nothing but a troll. Yeah. And says nothing more substantive than chat GPT. Just a reminder, the guy who said I was a slow boy who didn't understand, which by the way, uh, I r often reject the presentation. of. Can we do the, so for example, the first time I talked to Clark, uh, he said that he, he called in with an argument he was going to make and then started right away instead of arguments. Sorry, this is the second time asking questions. So do you believe that so the sublation of objective uh, of morals are propositional, something along the lines of that? Uh, and which is not a defense of a claim that's trying to do like he was trying to do with Matt. I've, I've come here to I've come here to make a claim. I fundamentally don't actually know what the hosts have said, but I will represent them as though I do. The guy is a fucking fraud who is very, very excited by his own yeah. uh, thoughts. Like, oh my, it, it, it's, I asked him how much Jordan Peterson he, con he consumes and he claimed none. And I'm calling bullshit on that because he just does the exact same style of, well, here's a, a complex uh, concept that actually isn't complex, but I've dressed up the words. And now people who agree with me think it sounds good because I'm using terms that I fundamentally don't understand. Uh, that is that is my anyway. Clark is now banned from future shows because on my show uh, he went with ableist slurs. Uh, uh, he's now going with fat shaming style bullshit and making medical assertions. So we won't be hearing from Clark again in the future. He is incapable from start to finish of being an honest interlocutor and can very much go fuck himself. Uh, we'll do a palate cleanser and then we've got a couple more argumentative calls lined up. But in, in the meantime. Uh, I've got Mr. Porter from Illinois. Uh, Mr. Porter, you are on the line. How you guys doing? You know, living the dream. Yeah, man. That last call was something else. Yeah. So I'll get straight to it. I don't want to waste any of your time. Um, why do you think repeat these callers are so glutton for punishment? Like they don't change their argument. They call in every week with the same argument. It gets knocked down. They come back the next week, same thing. And it's like if they get no airtime here, they go to other atheist shows like AXP or something, and then that host may entertain their bullshit longer. So to them, they may yeah. feel like they're making progress, and then they'll call back again and again. It's like the same argument. Why do you think that is? For me, part of it is um, I have a little bit more respect for the people who are actually um, not so much convinced that they're right, but fulfilling what they feel is an honest obligation to share the gospel or something like that. Um, it's, it is, you know, the Dunning-Kruger is strong in the world, which is that people are so confident and cocksure that they're right when they don't have the first fucking clue. Like, Clark has uh, a vocabulary of somebody who didn't actually take a philosophy course, but went and read very specific things about philosophy, because there's no way that you're going to not 
be presented with, you know, you, if you're going to sit here and say, hey, how do you know your senses are reliable? Which is a great question and a great discussion. One, one that I actually answered. But his position is that there's only one way or perhaps two uh, to, to demonstrate this. And because of that, he hasn't bothered to study any of the other things. So he can run around uh, in circles uh, and talking himself in circles, but he's missed some very basic elements. And so he has a gross conceptual error and he's very confident that he's correct and he thinks he's going to win. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the reasons why. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've, I've obviously engaged... I really I've Go obviously ahead. engaged with a lot of the repeat callers as well, and I'm one of the few people who have, uh, well, I shouldn't say few, but I've I've insisted we not ban certain people that we've thought about banning before because I actually see some of them as potentially being in a phase of deconstruction, but even if they're not, I see the repetition of their calls as useful to the deconstruction of other people who are in similar phases because there are people that, in, during your deconstruction, you hit these phases once after another before you drop belief of like, okay, but what about this argument that to me at the moment still sounds very compelling? The witnesses of the resurrection argument, the version I've heard that still sounds very compelling. The, this argument, this argument, this argument. And so, uh, a lot of times those repeat callers are running through basically the list of those arguments, which are people are deconstructing from their motivations. It, I think that there are some people who are doing so out of an insecurity of their belief, uh, I, I, I was going to say which caller I think we do that with, but it would be rude to do so and might discourage them from calling yeah. again in the future. And by the way, me, me banning Clark, that's about this instance in me. I'm, <laughs> I don't plan to ever have Clark on any show that I'm on to talk to. If Clark wants to call into some other show on the line and engage, um, that's up to the hosts of those shows. If, mm -hmm. if he wants to call into the Sunday show on sometime when I'm not here, or even if Jimmy wants to take the call, I can go play a game of chess during that call. That's uh, This is not a... Uh, rawr, you know, it, it's it's a little bit of hyperbole. In this case, I ha I did hard ban him in our call system. So for him to even attempt, he'd have to call from another uh, another line because this was the th I think the third time that he made it some sort of ableist ad hominem. Uh, and yeah. so yeah, in that in 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 his scenario, I'm not you know I'm not waiting to now platform him with a woman that he's going to call a slut or whatever thing he thinks that person is insecure about because he tries to go after he called me a slow boy which is uh, by the way an autistic ableist slur knowing I'm autistic Matt used to be overweight anybody who thinks he's overweight now clearly hasn't been oh, around I'm, him okay I, I, I am I'm, I'm just I, not as overweight as I used to be okay that sure that doesn't mean you can be overweight and not I, have high blood pressure I sure sure but that was the thing he tried to go for was the fat shaming stuff uh, I wish I weighed as much as you did, man. Uh, uh, every time I'm around you, I'm like, God damn, I got to switch to your diet. Um, anyway, sure. uh, but the, the, and so I'm not now going to then put him on with trans people who I feel like he'd be inclined to throw the, the T slur at or women who I think he's going to try and uh, suggest they're promiscuous when he, by the way, when in both of those instances, instances, he would lose miserably first. And then his go-to is what do I think these people are insecure about and what would I go to? But yeah, as far as why, what their motivation is, you know, there, by the way, there are also people over the years that we've, I've either intercepted the call and screening after and said like, hey, maybe take a break from this because some people are repeat callers for, you just suspect there's something going on and you might be participating in uh, uh, some, uh, something that's a little bit not positive for them. Uh, so we do suggest people take breaks when that so sort of stuff happens. But I, uh, I don't know. I, it's, it's the motivations. There's going to be different motivations for different people. Some of them I'm excited to see. And then sometimes we answer the call. Uh, Mark, Baked Alaska. I quite like Mark. Matt has not enjoyed, I think, a single call he's had with Mark. Uh, but I quite like Mark. Uh, however, there are times where Mark, first of all, I like Mark because he comes back even after I get a little bit mean, even after I get like frustrated with uh -huh. an argument and I say like, you are super bad at this. And he doesn't take it personally and he, and he moves on and we do it again. But uh, there, there are certain people who call in that I don't know. They don't need to keep calling in on repeat and other people who call in that I'm fine taking the call in, uh, again. That's all I've got. Yeah, Mark was going to be the first one I was going to bring up because he actually does like care to have the conversation, even if it is bad and it doesn't change. He called, I think, the same day 
No, the day the day after he talked to you, he called in the AXP with the exact same argument, and they gave him, of course, they gave more uh, airway because. I guess it was their first time talking to him, and it was like your 10th, so you knew where the conversation was going to go. And even after that, he still was like, yeah, but I mean, and they were literally giving the same rebuttals that like you were getting, and it just, it wouldn't click. But like you said, I think he was, I think he's in the process of like price. No, 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 I don't. I don't think he's deconstructing. So he's not the one that I think is deconstructing. I think Mark, I, again, I like Mark, and I take his calls because I think they're useful for people watching who find those arguments compelling. Mark, I think, is practicing to try and be some, it, it, basically doing what we're doing on the theistic side. I think Mark is, okay. is in some ways, practicing, in other ways, perhaps rehearsing for other institutions. Uh, I think Mark is probably trying to work toward... I think Mark admires what we're doing, just wishes we were theists doing it, and I think he's trying to cut his teeth in this world. Personally, I think that's what he's up to. Huh. Yeah. Well, that kind of leads me into my final question. Have you guys ever heard of uh, Sean McDowell, the apologist? I've met him. Yeah, I've heard the name, but I, I couldn't pick him out of a lineup. Sean, or... Sean McDowell is Josh McDowell's son. Josh McDowell wrote the original Evidence That Demands a Verdict thing. Um which is thoroughly debunked at infidels.org. I got to meet Sean um, when I was touring Canada. I went to an event that he did, and I got, I got up during the QA to ask a question, um, and I wasn't expecting anything, but the, the moderator recognized me and so called me out by name when I did the question. And I asked him specifically, I was asking Sean, if the newest <laughs> version of Evidence that Demands a Verdict had included um, responses to the objections that had been launched at infidels.org and he's like oh yeah yeah and i'll send you the latest copy and they did i gave him the address and they sent me the latest copy of evidence that demands a verdict so i have like five copies of it now including the latest but unfortunately the latest really didn't um address the specific things that i was asking about but yeah i've met sean once why do you ask yeah i think that's that <laughs> i asked because that's kind of what um what jimmy was describing with mark to where it seems like he's just practicing. That's exactly what Sean did. He uh, pretended to be an atheist at a Christian school in a class of like apologetics. And he answered all the questions same way any theist would. And then he, he like kind of, that was the, the big reveal was actually I'm a Christian and everybody applauded. It was, it's so weird. It's on YouTube if anybody wants to check it out. It's so weird. He's pretending to be yeah. an atheist I, while practicing the it's yeah. I know that there are several people who've had things like that. You know, like um, Sean McDowell had his time period kind of at college. I think Stuart Connectly did as well. Um, I don't ever want to say anybody was pretending or um, putting on stuff. People go through changes in their life. I mean, I used to be a believer. Now I'm an atheist. If there becomes, if there's ever evidence um, for a God, I could become a believer again or a believer in something different again. Um, m- my atheism is not the foundation of my life. The foundation is skepticism and humanism, and atheism is just a, a, a practical conclusion of skepticism applied to religious claims. Um, at the end of the day, if it turns out there is a God, I'll believe there's a God. And if he's not a humanist, he can go fuck himself. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Porter, I have a ton of good calls lining oh. up, so we're going to wrap this one up, but I'll give you a last question or comment if you want to go. That was literally all I had. I do want to give a shout out to uh, Fire Halo. <laughs> Applaud, round of applause for the timestamps on the each video. We oh, yeah. thoroughly appreciate Faya, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much time. Yeah, Faya, yeah. yeah I think it's Faya. Faya is, Faya is awesome. Thank you, Faya, for what, what, uh, uh, what Mr. Porter here is referencing is we have a commenter who does the job that, honestly, I should be doing, but it's another thing to do, uh, but puts chapters in the comments. And anytime I, I have the time, I go and I make sure to pin uh, uh, Faya's comment at the top so that we can people can jump around. At some point, uh, we'll, we'll get on it when I can buy back some time, but it's uh it is another thing to do on top of everything else. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Porter. Thank, thank you for the shout out for Faye too. Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah, you guys. That's cool. Thanks. Thanks. And there should be like shout out uh 
I mean, we, we've got so many great people in, involved, both moderators, call screeners, yeah. um, and it, we're going to need more of that. We're, we're building up. I, I love the fact that we're building a network to do the, the things that have always been a part of the mission and always been a part of my goals personally. Um, you know, maybe we're going to end up with a community center and, and more yeah. local meetups and stuff like that, but maybe even uh, meetups beyond the Austin area at some point. I'm just... I'm I'm really excited and I'm glad people are involved and encouraged and recognizing this because if every minute of every show was like trying to talk to Clark. <laughs> Sorry, I I'd Clark. quit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd quit. Because what's happened with Clark is I, I and I swear, you know, you could take clips out of there where I'm definitely excited, animated, irritated. Um not properly pissed yet but along those things along those lines and the truth is he calls in he says some stuff i correct what he says then he asks questions i answer his questions and then he goes on his little i'm gonna smugly dismiss stuff and make assertions about positions you don't have and all this other stuff it is those people are not interested in actually understanding what your position is precisely um i i would love to know why Clark holds the position that he does. Yep. But when you say you don't you, you don't know what the problem of hard solipsism is, um, and, and we're having <laughs> conversations about senses, and I give you, the, and I point out, it's pragmatic, and, and I must rely on my senses. Well, that's circular. No, but it would be circular if I said my senses are reliable because of my senses. I haven't said my senses are reliable. I have said that my senses demonstrate reliability through independent verification and we also know that our senses are not always reliable it was the 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 in, independent confirmation that serves as the foundation for this not eidetic universals um anyway i, I so here, here's what i'm going to do first i'm going to tell everybody what the next call is gonna be then i'm going to tell everyone the schedule for the upcoming week and then we're going to take that call. But so you'll stay, just so you know, the next call we're going to take is from an individual who would like to argue about the, it looks like the question, can atheism and theism be true at the same time? And this will be from a theist. I'm excited to take that call. Before we do, thank you, Alex, for screening today. As Matt mentioned, we have so many amazing people here. Alex is one of them who helps with screening. Thank you, I Got Cookies. We also have Dylan and Stephanie Helms, Ilya, uh, and All Things Considered. And if I'm missing anybody else with the wrenches in chat today, Thank you so much. It means a ton to us that that we have people who volunteer their time uh, to help out and keep things sort of organized and set and to encourage anybody who tries to become argumentative in the live chat to remind them that the place for arguments is on the phones with us and you don't get to detract and have a sideshow in the live chat. I fail to come up with a way to make the next week better without adding more shows. I, I Don't get me wrong. There are people I would have... Uh, the sh it, more people added to this upcoming week of shows would have made it better. But isolated to the four shows we have coming up, I don't know how to improve it. So let's do the announcements. On Monday, Skeptalk, R and Raw, and because y'all wouldn't shut the fuck up about it, Professor Dave is joining R and R on Skep Talk. You're welcome. I did it. I got him. You're welcome. You did this. Uh, uh, no, I'm. I, thank you, uh, by the way, for suggesting it. It's nice to go to a guest and say, "Y'all have no idea how much you are requested. Would you like to come on?" That's always nice. Second, on Tuesday, Forrest is being joined by Dr. Eric Burnett, who is a Vax educator and freaking. I, I, I didn't know about him until Forrest told me about him. You're going to want to see this guy. He's awesome. On Wednesday, Matt Dillahunty, one of my okay, he's an okay dude, joined by one of my favorite people, Dave Warnock. Uh, so Dave Warnock will be joining him on The Hangup this Wednesday. And also we're looking to have Dave Warnock back as often as he'd like to uh, uh, for the foreseeable future. And Arden Hart will be joined by nominal Naomi on the Transatlantic Collin Show this Thursday. I dare you to make a better lineup. I Any network anywhere, you're not beating us this week. That's the best fucking lineup anyone can pull off without adding additional shows. Uh, anyway, that's all we've got. Now we can get to the call about whether or not uh, atheism and theism can be true at the same time. So to that end, we have Steve in Oregon, who I think has called before. Steve, is this your first time calling? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm wrong then. Yeah, go ahead and uh, 
give us your proposition. Uh, and, and the live chat is going to wonder what they should refer to you as since you don't have pronouns up here. But maybe, I'll, maybe we'll address that later because sometimes I diverge the whole talk just about that. So go ahead, Steve. Okay, so maybe maybe my question is a bit misleading. I I know the question's ridiculous, but um, I'm trying to have I'm having a hard time making an argument as to why they cannot both be true. And um, if you just kind of entertain this idea, I've kind of come up with like a um a a devil's advocate for the position that both could both could be true. And I'd just like you to kind of like help me figure out why it's wrong. Um, so the abnormal claim is that both atheism and theism can be true. And um, as a devil, devil's advocate, I suggest that this can be true because, like Lao Tzu says, um, uh, there are two sides to each coin. Thus, the notion of atheism necessitates theism, and the notion of theism necessitates atheism. So, like, um, you could kind of have the argument like atheism and theism are one and the same, necessitating each other. And I don't, I don't know. I feel like based on like your comments, Matt, like you would. You'd probably agree with that. I'm not sure, though. No. The very notion. So, atheism is essentially... Or theism is the proposition that some God exists. Atheism is the position of not accepting that position is true. Something cannot be both true and not true at the same time in the same way. That the, violates the... Uh, the law of non-contradiction. And similarly, I don't see how any person could both except maybe somebody can but i don't see how anybody could both accept that a god exists and accept that god a god doesn't exist or the, accept that the proposition is true and that the proposition is not true at the same time in the same way so no theism and atheism cannot both be true at the same time that violates the the law of non-contradiction period Steve, I think I, I think so, I might be seeing where your mix-up is because I think what you just tried to ask isn't the same as the what your assert what it was the assertion it was based on. Are you suggesting that if you propose something, if you say X exists, once you pro pro propose it, essentially you enter into consciousness the possibility of the rejection of that claim. Therefore, the opposite yeah. claim e enters existence also. Yes, but that doesn't make and the opposite claim true. So I either have a bird in my hand or I don't. So whether the fact that I say I have a bird in my hand creates the option that there that you don't accept that claim by I make the claim and now you not only can accept it but created simultaneously is the op opposing claim. Uh, either I do or don't have the bird in my hand. It isn't simultaneously true that I do, even at like a Schrodinger's physics level. Yeah. So, so for any I proposition, for, for any proposition that actually has a truth value, Jimmy has a bird. There's a proposition. That proposition is either true or not true. Period. There, there are no other options. You can believe that the proposition is true. You cannot believe that the proposition is true. You can believe the proposition is false, and you cannot believe the proposition is false. Your position of belief about that proposition is independent of whether or not it's true. And so you could be a pro-Birdist, and I could be an anti-Birdist, and then the, the model of pro-Birdist exists, but that's a meta-level thing. That's, you're confusing the map for the place. Can we agree that either Jimmy has a bird or he doesn't have a bird, and those are the only two options? So, so that's my like. I would agree with that. So, my question, I guess, is like, um, like the underlying like world, like, like, um, how would because you know the um, if I could sidetrack for one second uh, to kind of explain what I'm trying to say, like, you know, the painting of like the artist drawing his own hand. Yes, I do. Uh, sure, MC Escher drew so, his hands. I've seen lots of people draw their hands. Yeah. No, no. So like, like it's a, it's an artwork of like, um, there's like two hands and one's drawing the other. It's like a famous piece of artwork. Yes. It's by MC Escher. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but it seems like you're logical. I don't know much about this, but it seems like you're very like, um, logical positivist. And I don't see how logical positive. Oh, no, I'm not a logical positive. Please stop trying to label it and just focus on the issue yeah. because you don't understand the label. What, what does a, a picture of hands drawing a hands, 
which doesn't exist in reality, and as far as we can tell, can't resist in reality, exist in reality. None of, and and whether or not I'm a logical positivist, which I'm not, what does any of that have to do? Is it is it true that either Jimmy has a bird or Jimmy does not have a bird? Are those the only two possibilities? But how do you know? I just asked you. Are do you, are you Why convinced? You because you are not listening and answering the question, listen to me very carefully. Here's a proposition. Here, here's two, a pair of propositions. One is the direct negation of the other. Jimmy has a bird. Or sorry, Jimmy does have a bird. Jimmy does not have a bird. Are those the only two possible positions on that issue? It would seem like it, but how would you know? So it, because of the law of non-contradiction, identity, and excluded middle, because we can draw a set theory that shows that either something is A or not A, and that everything is either... Why are you interrupting me? Why are you interrupting me? Do you want to know how to know this, or do you want to talk? Please, you sorry. Set theory would show a, a simple Venn diagram with a circle. Everything is either in the circle or not in the circle. Everything okay. in the whole universe, whether it exists or not, is either in the circle or it's not in the circle. And that diagram encompasses absolutely everything. Whatever is in the circle is in the circle. Whatever is not in the circle is not in the circle. Nothing is both inside the circle and outside the circle. And there can be nothing that would be both or neither. That's the foundation so of logical question, reasoning. So I guess my question is, how would you know that the circle contains, like, how do you know that's all the possibilities? There could be something outside it's, that. It's like, obvious like and self-evident by looking at it, because it is of the impossibility of it being any other way. This is the foundations of logic, identity, non-contradiction, excluded middle. They are presumed to be universally true and inviolate, but they can't, be but they can't be demonstrated to be universally true yeah, and inviolate because point. you would have to assume them in order to, oh my God, I'm done talking with you. Steve, you gotta, you gotta stop, you gotta stop interrupting. And honestly, at this point, it sounds like you're trying to do what Clark was trying to do. Just at least you're not word salading it. You're trying to get all the way back to how do you know you're not a brain in the vat? And it's such a pedantic, silly argument because no one does, including believers, know they aren't something like that. Yeah, but how do you know that? How do you Steve, know that? Steve, Steve. Because I now, fucking studied I rather like, than just assuming that it wasn't possible. I tried to explain it to you, but you wouldn't yeah. shut up long enough for me to finish the explanation. You you can't know. <laughs> how do you know, dude? How do you Steve, know? Steve, 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 stop trying to now engage Goodbye, this Steve. as a pedantic joke, right? We're all humans. We're all people here trying to have an actual conversation. Know? Steve, shut the fuck up. If you ask one more time, I will ban you for from the show because you're interrupting me and you're we've already explained to you why this pedantic you can ban question. Me or not ban me. What's the third one? Steve. There isn't a third one, you little bitch. Fuck off. Yeah. Okay. What Steve, here's the here's I, before I let you go, I want to see if you're capable of any intellectual honesty and ask you questions related to a completely different thing. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever mistaken a person on the phone for being a man when they were a woman or a woman when they were a man? And I'm not accounting for the existence of trans people. We can say, we can say that not talking about trans issues, just people in general. Yeah. Have you ever mistaken yeah, yeah. on the phone a man for a woman or a woman for a man? Mm. My perception. Well, how would I know? Like, how would has I know? Ever, has anyone ever corrected you? Have you ever Wait. said something like sir or ma'am and they said actually it's sir? No. Have you ever had that experience? Um, I think so. Yeah. Maybe. And I think you would acknowledge many people have done that, right? Yeah. yeah Steve, yeah, yeah. do you also understand? Do you believe me when I don't care if you believe me, but do you acknowledge? Over 2,000 people are watching the show live right now. And on average, this show gets about 40,000 views uh, uh, over the course of about a week to a two weeks. Is that something that you, you get? Mm. So do you also acknowledge that that is potentially 40,000 people who may leave a comment or have a discussion about you and by your voice alone and even by your name, Steve, they cannot be sure 
that you are a man or a woman because people do mistake, make mistakes, and it, 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 it isn't self-evident that you, Steve, just because you have the name Steve and have a, uh, a deep voice, even though it may seem likely that it is not a rule that that means you are a man. Yes, Steve? Is the answer yes? Oh, Steve hung up because I think Steve recognized they were about he. I Well, no, I should go with they since they didn't give pronouns. They were going to lose the pronoun argument here because the way this was going to go was the acknowledgement that a lot of people are going to want to talk to, you, to about you and that it is useful to use short pronouns. And because we can't tell by name and voice alone that that it is kind whether or not you accept trans people at all. And I've, I've mentioned this before. Call-in shows should have been doing pronouns long before anybody was thinking about uh, trans issues because it is a useful utility. Yeah, you know. Even if there was not a single trans person in the world, obviously there are many, pronouns are useful when you do not have enough data to make an educated guess where you still would be wrong, could be wrong, uh, uh, it, pronouns are extremely useful in a call-in show format. And I think Steve knew he was about to lose that, and that's why he hung up and wouldn't answer the third question. Regardless what, of how you feel about trans issues, pronouns on a call-in show makes sense. What sucks is that Steve had a real question about knowledge, and it's a, an important question um, that actually has an answer and that could have easily been answered uh, because knowledge doesn't require absolute certainty, okay? That we already know. Knowledge does not require absolute certainty. No, no reasonable model of knowledge in, in philosophy says, oh, you must be absolutely certain. And yet that is the model that Steve was trying to actually get to, which is, how can you be sure? How can you be sure? How can you be sure? But he was saying, how can you know? And we can know because knowledge attainment doesn't require certainty or any appeal to certainty or anything like that. And it's fairly trivial to demonstrate uh, that case. But you can't get to it if you have a two-year-old sitting in front of you going, how do you know that? 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 Because they're not listening. They, he didn't care at all about yeah. the actual way in which we go about determining that we know something. And this is something we've lectured countless times. It's trivial for me to say, okay, here's a piece of information. How did you become aware of that information? Which is one, say, is one way of saying, how did you know that? How did you, because no, uh, not in addition to just knowledge in the sense of epistemology, no can also be familiarity. So here's a fact. How do you know that? What are you asking me? How am I, how do I have knowledge of that? Or how do I count that fact as knowledge, like a justified true belief or a belief held to such a high degree of confidence? Um, because knowledge really is just an expression of how confident you are in a belief. And you may be confident because you think it's justified and true. You could be confident because it would be worldview altering to discover that it's wrong. But that is a theory of knowledge uh, that is far more uh, robust than what we're going to get to with just Oh, how can you be certain? You can't be. I don't think you can be certain about anything. I've advocated against absolute certainty um, for anything beyond esoteric labels and, and stuff like that. It's yeah, so same. frustrating because we could, we could have actually, in two or three calls here, really had a good conversation if the caller hadn't just sat there and done the nuh uh, nuh uh, nuh uh, nuh uh. Are I we feel there like yet? I'm fucking talking to two year olds. Yeah. It's so annoying. It, the, both callers both steve and clark were exercises in pedantry exclusively like it, it, it they almost talked about things that matter but they weren't actually there to talk about things that matter they really just thought they heard in church somewhere that then i said well how do you know that and then they said this and i said but then how do you know that and then they said this yep. and i said but then how do you know that and they they cry and cosplay the stories theists tell about owning an atheist and it never goes well for them. And then given the option to be intellectually honest where they realize they're about to lose a pronoun argument, they hang up on, they, they hang themselves up. Uh, That's part of it. Apparently, I'm, I'm hoping that the rest of the calls go, go much better. But 
There's, I, I'm surprised Arlindo didn't call because he was going to call to pick a bone with you. His assertion was that you have simultaneously said debates do, don't have winners and losers. And then you also said Christopher Hitchens lost a debate. And I explained <laughs> to him how I could make those statements and then not be contradictory, which he agreed with the logic, but still I think doesn't believe you were doing that. Um, I, I, can, I can address that. Um, what I've said and, and my intent of all this is that when I go into debates, I don't do it with a sense of how do I win or how do I lose? I understand that people watching a debate will pick a winner or loser in their mind. That's not my goal when I'm entering a debate. And so when I watch a debate, I can still make assessments about whether or not somebody was successful in their mm -hmm. goals of defending their proposition, um, but I don't view it as winner or loser. But to whatever extent you could say this person did a better job and is therefore the winner, um, I think Hitch lost a debate. Um, I think plenty of people have. But m what I'm saying is when I go into a debate, to me, the purpose is to do the best job that I can at educating. If the other person does better in somebody else's eyes, that's great. I've had one where I, I think one of the early debates that I did with Cliff Connectly, um, he definitely did better as far as like debate performance, because as I pointed out, debate is theater. Um, it's not just a bland presentation of facts and who had the best facts. If so, we wouldn't need a debate for that. Um, there's a theater aspect to it. There's a personality aspect to it. So when I say they're not about winning and losing, that's about my goal isn't to go in and be perceived as the winner in anybody else's eyes. The only, the only thing I care about is, did I do my best to present the information? Um, that said, you can still look at a debate and say, this person outperformed the other one, irrespective of what, what your position is. Did I mispronounce pedantry? Somebody said, somebody as a joke was correcting how I said it. And I don't know if the whole joke is correct. I would have said pedantry. Pedantry? Pedantic, pedantry. Ped okay. Pedantry is what I, I, I don't know. I don't know where yeah. this, where the stress is. Um, it could be pedantry. I would have said pedantry. Pedantry versus pedantry. Pedantry. Okay. But interesting. Yeah. It'd be different in different places. Who knows? It's funny because somebody just capitalized. It's pedantry as though as though mine was spelled differently. You did not give a pronunciation. Mine, the way I say, uh, said it, it's still spelled the way you've just capitalized it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, maybe you're saying put the emphasis there and hence the capitals. If, if uh, they capitalized all, all first three letters, that's one way of showing the emphasis. So yeah. Ped entry. Ped yeah. entry. Ped entry. Ped entry. Ped ped entry. Okay, whatever. I'm just going to keep right, saying we're, it. We're way off topic. There's Fred wants to home. argue with you. Uh, Fred, an atheist caller wants to argue with Matt. Matt, you can tell him whether this was meant to be a challenge for Wednesday or today, but yeah, wants to argue that to transgenderism down. is harmful and nonsensical the same way that Christianity is. Boy, exciting. Okay. So, how you doing, Fred? I'm good. Can you hear me? So, yeah, we need to divide this into two things. Let's deal with the harmful thing after, but when you say that Transgenderism and Christianity are both nonsensical. That's the position that you're you're actually wanting to defend. Yeah, but I mean, when I I want to be clear that I don't think all transgender people are monoliths. So I feel like we got to kind of be particular about what we mean by transgender because sometimes I have this conversation and people kind of sidestep it by giving different definitions. So I'm yeah. using like the medical definition. I give you mine. Like, how about I, mean, I, how about actually, I give you how about okay. how about I give you mine since you're going to be talking to me? Okay. So Christianity is an assertion about something supernatural. Um, that already puts it in a completely different category than transgenderism. Transgenderism, which I would say is not the correct label for anything, and. Um, and, and isn't really a thing, but the issues surrounding transgender and being transgender is the recognition that the social constructs that we've built, which are about varying degrees of masculinity and femininity, are real durable psychological models that describe our perceptions of ourselves and others in society. It's not about biological sex, it's not about chromosomes. Your chromosomes, your, your gametes, your genitalia, none of that um, is... Uh, a necessary indicator of where you are on a spectrum of masculinity and femininity. And, but whether or not you are cisgender or transgender does. Yeah, I actually disagree with that. And I'm feeling maybe that's okay. a good place to just start because of you, dis you disagree with the definition. 
Well, no, I just disagree with the one part. You you put a fact in your definition rather than just like defining it. So you said that masculinity isn't tied to biology; instead, it's tied no, to gender. No, That's no, the no. Okay, correct. This me, is the this is the problem, problem when people don't listen. I didn't say it wasn't tied to biology. I said it wasn't necessarily tied to biology. Do you would you agree with me that that two people with the same chromosomes, born uh, assigned male at birth, one of them could be very masculine and one of them could be very feminine? I'm asking you how you're defining that, though. Because I'm... Well, I'm cause listen, question, well, no, I'd no, Fred, no. Fred, I just made this as easy as possible to try to get to the difference. Here, here are two people who both have the same chromosomes. They're assigned male at birth. Would you agree with me that one of them could be very masculine and one of them could be very feminine? No. My answer is no. Okay. I that. Then you're wrong. I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't even know how we can have a conversation. I find it absolutely... But, that, but that's why... I'm, no, stop. I'm still talking, Fred. Yes, St still talking here. I find it absolutely okay, dishonest. Gonna... You're not if you're fucking talking. I find it absolutely dishonest for someone to say that it's not possible for two people with XY chromosomes, for one to be more masculine than the other and more feminine than the other. That just betrays Wait, everything we know about masculinity and femininity. So what you're saying, Stop, your response you're... to me, what your, your response to me necessarily means that everyone with XY chromosomes is equally, equally masculine and That's equally not... feminine to everybody else Stop. with that. Right. The way I understood. Wait, did you just tell me to? No, no, no. Here, I'm gonna mute your ass for a second because one, you're not telling me to stop on my show. Two, I've asked you this, and you, you, you presented that you did not agree with it. I'm going to give you the opportunity to explain that. But when you say, when my position is, here's two individuals with the same XY chromosomes. Is it possible for one of them to be very masculine and one of them to be very feminine? You said no. And that implies that you think that if you have XY chromosomes, everyone with those same chromosomes is equally masculine and or equally feminine. Is that your position? No, that is not my position. I understood so then you your agree question to be if they were the same. I understood your question to be talking about twins. When you said the same, I thought you meant exactly the same. Like biologically okay, hang on. twins. Are you suggesting that two biological twins are equally masculine and equally feminine? Yes. I don't agree with you. Let's go see if there's two twins in the world, ever in the history of the world, that are not as masculine and feminine. But that's why I'm asking you, how are you defining masculinity? Are you defining it based on their biology? Or are you defining it based on something that has to do with gender? Laverne Cox, by the way, has a twin brother. Yes. So there we go. So would you say that Laverne Cox and her twin brother are equally masculine or equally feminine? I don't know who that is. You don't know who Laverne Cox is, but you're calling into debate on transgender issues. Okay. Um, and, and you're not convinced. So Laverne Cox is a trans woman whose twin brother is a cis man. Are you saying they're equally masculine and feminine? I think at birth they would have been. I didn't ask you about at birth. Hey, are, are you suggesting that infants are somehow masculine and feminine? Masculinity and femininity is yes. about how people interact in society and what presentations they give and what affectations they put on and how they represent themselves. An infant doesn't do that. Okay. You don't, do, you, do you know nothing about societal gender construct? I've... I've been asking you that exact question that you finally answered because my issue is when you say that masculinity is based on norms and presentation, you are making a sexist argument. You are saying that or no, you are sir. implying that if a person – hold on. So There's nothing, let me ask the question. Listen, I'm not – I'm not – I wasn't making an argument sexist or otherwise. I'm giving you the definitions. I'm talking about what is – and you're the one that is that you're the one that has first of all suggested that two people with similar chromosomes are. Where are you getting that definition are, from? 
from my head. That's the only one that matters. You're talking to me right now. If you want to debate somebody else on trans rights issues, you're going to have to go with their definitions. You have to, you have to get your we head can, out of okay, this notion okay, that there must be, shut up. You have to get your head out of this notion that there must be some authority handing things down. I'm telling you what my view is and how and where it is consistent with the trans community at large. You don't seem to understand these issues at all. I'm happy to try to explain them to, them, to you, but when you say, you start by saying, I'm, hey, go ahead, just go ahead. You want to talk, go ahead. I'm fine with using your definition. The problem is when you're saying that this is the definition, it sounds like you're appealing to the English language. So of course I'm going to go to some no, sort sir. of authority to go, okay. It, it, no, sir. Uh, language know, sir. is our bitch. Language, we manipulate. We invented every word and we, it's all about usage. Language doesn't have, words don't have meanings, they have usage. And I'm telling you how I use it. And my usage is consistent with the trans community, with the psychological experts on this. Um, this is, there's nothing shocking here. All I was asking I'm is talking about masculinity and femininity, definition. and you you denied something that is very obviously true, which is people can have XY chromosomes and be varying degrees of masculine and feminine. And similarly, people can have XX chromosomes according, and be varying degrees of masculine and feminine. Your definition, yes. According, according to, to any fucking yes. useful definition of masculinity and femininity. We See, now that assertion I don't agree with. And you're, see, you're going back Tough and forth, shit. but you're saying, okay, any Tough definition. Tough shit. But okay, you, are what, you using your definition? Define, about define, any definition? define, 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 definition. define, shut your fucking pie hole. And now when I stop talking, define what you think masculinity and femininity are in a way that disagrees with what I said. Go for it. I think masculinity and femininity are traits that are common amongst males and females. So a more masculine trait would be like a secondary sexual characteristic like height. So a woman who's a lot taller, we would call that she's more masculine in that way because it's a trait that's common amongst males. That's different yes. than what you're saying. But where you're basing it off of gender. No, no, sir. No, yes. sir. It's not. I specifically said define it in a way that is inconsistent with what I just said. And that is not in any way inconsistent with what I just said. You don't think... You don't think that's inconsistent? I said it's based on biology. No, it's not. not. You said the exact same thing. Femininity and masculinity are those traits that are commonly seen among men and women. That's not what I said. I said amongst males and females. I'm talking about biology. No, no, you fucking liar. Actually, you said men and women, not <laughs> males and females. You I, might have slipped up, but we can rewind, and you can as rewind, as and you as can as see that you did not say what you think you did, you sloppy thinking motherfucker. Okay. Don't accuse me if, if of getting mistake, it wrong when you got I it wrong. I made a mistake. I don't know if I got it wrong or not. I will check back. If I got it wrong, then I'll correct the record and say, Here we go. I'm let me, let me, let me, let me just retract. Females. Fred, Fred. Fred, let me just retract all of that. Yes. Let me retract the name calling. Let me retract everything about you getting it wrong or whatever else. What's the difference between a female and a woman? It depends on which language paradigm we're using. Like, so, because Matt would define it as woman is gender, and I, I'm assuming female is biological uh, distinctions. That's I don't understand why you can't answer it. the question that you're asked at any point. I'm asking you, what's the I difference between... It? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. What is the difference between female and I'm woman? And what you answered, what you... All right, now I'm fucking muting you because you're absolutely driving me nuts with your dishonesty. I asked you, what's the difference between female and woman? Because I wanted to move forward on that. And the answer you gave included, Matt would probably blah, blah, blah. I'm asking you, Fred, in your mind, what is the difference between female and woman? Nothing in your answer should include Matt would say or Matt would think. You're either gonna answer that or we're done. What's the difference in your definitions between fe a female and a woman? Okay, you didn't ask me for my definition of the first time. If you're asking me, oh my God, no you're, we're done. Goodbye, 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 whiner. You, I'm not you fucking did. doing it. I like when he said, ask your co-host. Like I, oh, dude, I tuned out of that call forever ago. Ask I, me what?
I may be wrong. It, he may have said male and female um, instead of man and woman. It, it's entirely possible he said that, and I retract it, and I apologize for accusing him of saying something that he didn't. Um, but when we, get to, when we get beyond that to say what's the difference between female and male, or female and woman, all we're talking about is masculinity and femininity as the way people present themselves in society, the, the social roles that we perceive. Are these a result in the past? Uh, are they secondary sexual, sexual characteristics? Yeah, they began as, sexual, as secondary sexual characteristics, and that constructed the way society perceives a difference between men and women. Hey, Matt Remedy, you can call in and uh, try to actually have a better conversation, but saying I chickened out um, gets you put in time out at least, if not just straight up banned. Either call in or whatever. I very, very clearly, transgender, cisgender are people whose gender is identical to what or consistent with what they were assigned at birth based on strict biological uh, characteristics. As people get older, their secondary characteristics kick in, and some of those were originally tied to biology, and some of those aren't. There's nothing about having XY chromosomes or this gamete or this genitalia that tells someone how masculine or feminine you are, and it also doesn't tell you who you're attracted to. I'm at least glad that when we're starting to talk about trans issues, we're not constantly doing it in the context of, oh, it's just, you know, gay men or gay women who don't want to be gay and so they're going to do this transition because sexuality in 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 who you are uh, attracted to um is not the same or even in the same category as gender and so if you're all you're going to say is that gender is sex and fully once upon a time undeniably anytime anyone said gender and sex they were talking about essentially the same thing uh as as potentially calls are trying to line up about this i do want to mention something one today's show is generally going to be on theism spirituality and stuff though occasionally we break model i in the remaining 38 minutes i don't really have a lot of interest in taking a bunch of i don't believe transgender people exist calls matt has a show in which you can call about anything on wednesdays regarding his views but even more important than that and i don't think matt will uh, uh argue with that phrasing Every Thursday, all of you brave Twitter warriors, all of you brave counter uh, fucking gender critical people, you can call and talk to actual trans people who there is a limit to the amount of bullshit, but you can get away with quite a bit of bullshit and they'll engage you like you're actually trying to learn and com converse and everything. Now, if you just start throwing ad homonyms, them misgendering them on purpose and shit, that's not going to fly. But for example, there's a person who's trying to line up a call at the moment who was told to call in and fair enough that they were told to call in uh, and we'll probably talk to them just to give them this instruction because they're on the screen right now who wants to say they agree that we should do pronouns, but I don't agree that men can get pregnant. You have two cis men on here. Why are you only a brave talking about trans people without trans people? You can talk to trans people in this exact format because I am not creative enough to create a new one and it's on the line. On this, in this exact format, you can do that on Thursdays. So if that call stays on the line, uh, uh, we'll probably call and give them that same direction. But with the remaining 40 minutes, I want to get to these still on topic uh, uh, calls. And so... You, but I got one thing I got to do. Sure. First of all, Fred, thank you for calling. My apologies for calling you a dishonest motherfucker and for saying that you said something that perhaps you didn't. In the heat of the moment, that goes that way. My question still stands, and I'm happy to take it on a Wednesday or whatever else. For you, what is the difference between female and woman? Because you, you seem to make a, a strong distinction um, over the difference there, that this applies to men and women, this applies to males and females, and I would like to actually get to the heart of that. But at the end of the day, when you pretend that when I'm talking about this spectrum of masculinity, femininity, that I'm not talking about the presentation roles and things that, that are generally perceived to be men do this and women do that, that part is dishonest because that's absolutely what I expressed in great detail. And at the end of the day, your position was that transgenderism is as nonsensical as Christianity, which is flatly false because 
the social this the sociology is about how and what humans do and they're actually doing this christianity is about the supernatural and the supernatural is untestable unfalsifiable and doesn't tie to anything identifiable or verifiable in reality whereas gender ties to both the secondary sex characteristics and the roles that extended from that and the presentation and identity of people and and and, and are in fact durable psychological constructs or uh, psychological models that apply to the social constructs in there. Then the second part of his claim, which we didn't get to, is that it's harmful. The only thing that's harmful that I'm aware of is when people actively try to shit all over trans people and make their lives more difficult because they don't fit into the box that you're hanging on to from the antiquated ideas rather than just accepting that the world is slightly more complicated than you want to allow for. Exactly. That's it. Uh, I, since Frank has moved to the chat, Frank did let the call go. Frank, just a reminder, if you specifically want to talk to Matt about his views on transgender issues, call him this Wednesday. If you want to actually engage the right people on trans issues, call this Thursday at 2 p.m. Central Time. It will be Arden Hart and Nominal Naomi, two extremely effective uh, communicators who will take your call and your assertions. And as long as you are respectful, treat you with respect too. Uh, we're going to, so some of these calls, I think we're going to probably do quick. Oh, did we just lose? God damn it. Um, we had a theist lining up, please call back. Uh, but in the moment for the oh. moment, we'll talk to Danny in, uh, New Jersey, Danny in New Jersey, you're on the line. Hi. Hello. Is this Jimmy and Matt? This is, Hey, yep. are we on Hi, speakerphone Danny. or something, Danny? Oh, yeah, if we can come off onto oh. just your regular, uh, 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 right into your ear so we get a Hi, little bit less. Say again? Is this Jimmy and Matt? Yes, it is. Hi. Hello. I'm Danny. Hi, Hi Danny. What did you want to, what did you call to ask about or assert? What do you, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> oh, well, I, okay. One thing, I'm, I'm happy to talk to you guys. Finally, just no. I'm one of your fans. So, yay. Sure, thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, um, uh, okay. So, I grew up in a very religious um, Jehovah's house. Sure. And I, I stopped believing in the Bible, specifically when I was a teenager. But, the the God thing, you know, it's a little bit. <laughs> I'm struggling, and uh, it's uh, I, I hold on to that, and I don't know why, because I've read the Bible, and he's not a nice person, Jehovah. He's 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 a he's a monster. Danny, what Honestly. um. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and see if we can, I, I think we can probably ask a series of questions to make this uh, uh, as efficacious as possible. What form does your current belief in God take? What does it look like? Are you praying? Do you believe in the Christian God? Is it that you just have a sense there's something out there, but you're not meaningfully interacting with it? What is, what is belief in God for you look like, like right now? I just feel like maybe there, there could be something that created us. Sure. Is there anything beyond know. that? Is it, it basically you're just still holding on to this idea that there might be something out there? Or do you feel like it is affecting your day to day behavior that you're doing things that you wouldn't do or would do if you did or didn't believe in God? Um, is it, or is it mostly just you yeah. haven't let go of this somewhat deistic concept of surely it, it's possible there's something out there? And uh, uh, where are you? Um. I mean, sometimes when I do stuff, I think, I think about that, like, you know, is God watching? That's kind of creepy. But, um, like, I guess in the idea, I don't know. But it's, it's the idea of God watching me, it's very creepy. You sure. Know? Well, just so you know, you're not a deist if you believe God is watching you, because a deist God is very impersonal. It, the, the idea is they created the universe and has no, has no real 
uh, interaction with any specific part of the universe. They just sort of are a part of the whole thing. Um, so it sounds like what you're saying is your current relationship with theism is you can't, you can't lose the Santa Claus condition of your past theism, the idea that there is somebody in constant, in a constant state of watching and auditing you. Is that correct? Yeah. Sure. Uh, the, the, now, the, the biggest piece of advice I'm going to give you is if, if you've already figured out that everything else is unreasonable, right now this is a vestige of trauma because losing your faith is traumatic. And so you don't lose all the things that you were afraid of. You don't lose all the things right away. And that usually it takes time. The thing that you're going to hear on this show the most often is you should probably reach out to the Secular Therapy Project if you don't have access to good therapy already and talk out in therapy the way some of those things express express and like what specific behaviors, for example, uh, uh, it, it sometimes leads to when you are getting this feeling that there is somebody watching you and, and the ways it impacts you. Um, it's, it's not that sort of pull toward it could still be out there. Isn't something you necessarily need to urgently address though. I'd appreciate anybody who still feels that not try and represent atheists and go and argue on Facebook at large. Uh, but as far I know, as, but it's like, go uh, ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I mean, I listen to like my family members, and, you know, other people who are in the faith or whatever. And I, no, I despise the Jehovah's faith. I don't believe in it. But As is your right. I, I hear their testimony and stuff. And it's like, could they all be lying? Yes. I mean, maybe they just <laughs> then it, it, it's it, it's not even just that they could all be lying. They also can just all be wrong. How much time yeah. do you put into wondering whether or not all Muslims are lying or are wrong? Are, do, yeah. Have, yeah. have, have I mean, you have you ever probably gone? Not all. They're probably not all lying. There are plenty of people who probably sincerely believe. I I sincerely believed for decades. Um, I wasn't lying. I just was wrong. Yeah. Did, did, did that ever talk to you? No. No. Yeah. No. Clearly not. He's never talked to me either. And and Danny, Maybe as far as I can tell, he's never it. talked to anybody. Exactly. All the people who I was taught to recognize certain feelings as God communicating with me, and they are feelings that I can I currently know. feel. Wait a second, Danny. They're feeling. Danny, something. what's that? I, I've never felt anything. That's why I said. This is all bullshit. But Danny, even if you had felt things, it would have still been bullshit. Because I did feel feelings, but the feelings I were feeling I, were the I, types of... Just a second, Danny. The feelings I was feeling were the types of feelings that my body elicits to the response of certain types of music and certain types of harmony and certain types of feeling of connection. And I can now feel those same feelings, if I want to, doing things that the church cl claims is very anti, uh, uh, antithetical to the Holy Spirit because it has nothing to do with God or the Holy Spirit. So regardless of whether you felt anything or not won't have made the religion right or wrong because whether God exists is not a quality of a feeling. You must have been having, you must have had a nice shirt because when I went to the hall, I was bored out of my mind. I, to tell you the <laughs> truth, it's also hard to understand what you're saying because the quality of your audio isn't coming in. You said I must have had a nice something and I'm not sure what you said. I said you must have had a nice church because no, I, I grew up as a Mormon. Home. It was not a nice church. Okay. I was put out of my mind when I went to the hall. That's what they call church. Yeah, I know. Hall. Kingdom halls. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I was put out of my mind. I, I just feel like my life has been wasted. Sure. Danny, here's, here's what I'm going to recommend to you. Uh, because I think, I think the conversation, I think what you need to be doing is deconstructing specifically from your faith. It sounds like the fact that you're like compelled by hearing other people's testimonies and stuff. I'm going to recommend if you're not already doing it, that you go check out a channel called Telltale, T-E-L-L-T-A-L-E, -L -L -E, who it will break down for you. Oh, oh. Uh, I would oh, be spending sorry. time with that content. If YouTube content is what you like. 
Uh, there's also Lloyd Evans and others. Telltale is is my friend, so like sort of my favorite. Uh, but he does an excellent job at breaking down what is so unreasonable. And so when you hear a person say, I know this quality of Jehovah's Witnesses is true, but you're also armed with the knowledge while that why that specific quality isn't, since this is the personal experience you're yeah. having and the thing you need to deconstruct from, that's going to be most useful for you. Uh, as far as uh, additional advice for letting go of your idea of God, the th secular therapy project, I don't have better advice than that uh, uh, for a person oh. who's deconstructing. That's basically where I'm left. All right. Okay. Well, thanks for talking to me. Yeah. Thank you, Danny. Um, That's rough. Um, yeah. Thanks for talking. Thanks. Um, thanks, Danny. Oh, let's get to talk to you and, and Jimmy. I'm afraid your call is breaking out fiercely. Yeah. And I, I, I think oh. you said something nice, but uh, we'll just say goodbye here. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yeah, it's reaching out to organizations like Recovering from Religion and the Psychotherapy Project and all these things. I'm, people underestimate uh, the significance of religious trauma syndrome. Whether it's just whether it's 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 not. Religious trauma syndrome isn't something that's been recognized by the DSM. It's something that psychologists like Marlene Winnell have proposed um, based on repeatedly seeing patients. And I think that's, that's an interesting thing here, which is so many things that we interact with get in, incorrectly labeled as mental illness, mental health issues, and, and all these things. Um, and then we would point to like the DSM of, uh, you know, here's the diagnostic manual to allow you to, to determine what mental illnesses or defects, et cetera, someone might have. And so something like religious trauma syndrome isn't listed in there. Uh, by the way, it, it's, it's listed some things incorrectly in the past and uh, may change and, and do some stuff in the future. But religions have done such a bad job of dealing with mental health issues. And everything comes down to what our brains accept. So we're back to the first caller of how do you know that your that your senses are reliable? Yeah, okay, I don't. I know that I know roughly how reliable they are with respect to the ability to to verify them. But I don't begin with the assumption that they're reliable. As a matter of fact, I generally reject notions of properly basic. But when you talk about something like religious trauma syndrome, it's still very early in our ability to say, hey. I've now had five patients, 10 patients, 100 patients, 400 patients who have all come to me suffering a variety of post-traumatic stress disorder or some, some sort of other trauma um, symptoms that are specifically tied to religious doctrine, religious upbringing, not necessarily the truth or falsehood of doctrines within Christianity or Islam, but with regard to religions, what people are doing. And, and maybe... This is just coming off the top of my head. This could be completely wrong, and, and perhaps all of us, including me, should throw it out right away. But I would say in the same way that there is a difference between the doctrines in orthodoxy versus orthopraxy, there are differences between the doctrines that make up Christianity and the practices that make up Christianity. And so there's what the Bible says, there's what the church might say doctrinally, and then there's what people do. Yeah. And it may be that what people do is the most important part. And similarly, there are primary sexual characteristics, secondary sexual characteristics, and then the societal construct of gender being what people do. And it may be that that's the most important part. I don't know how well that analogy holds. I'm in the middle of, of live TV. Um, but it could be one of those things where I'm seeing... a a connection between problems and confusion and, and all I have is a rough analogy. But when I hear from people who are like, oh, you must have had a nicer church. Maybe. Um, I, I can't say. I can't I certainly can't say whether or not Jimmy had a nicer church, but doesn't the people who survived uh, transitioning out of religion, deconstructing religious belief and living life as atheists afterwards, um, People for whom it's easier, it may be something about their character. It may be something about their psychology. Um, or it could be about the church that they're in. But that doesn't change the fact that there are people who are suffering traumatic uh, symptoms directly related to either how, how their parents 
practiced religion towards them, how their church and the church members around them practiced religion towards them, or how society as a whole within the people that they could interact with practiced their religious beliefs towards them. Is there a version of Christianity that doesn't traumatize anyone? There might well be. There might be this incredibly gay-friendly church, um, but I imagine that would traumatize my parents. <laughs> and yeah. so it becomes this, there's trauma out there, potential trauma for everybody. The only potential trauma from secular humanism doesn't come from secular humanism. It comes from religion. And so it's religion saying you're broken, you're living right. your life wrong, all of these things. There's nothing about secular humanism that has ever, in my, in my view, and if you have, if you have thoughts on, on why secular humanism is a negative, I'd love to, to debate it both here at where we're going to do debates, maybe not on a call-in show, maybe somewhere else, because um, I don't see any possible downside. There yeah. are no tenets, no dogma, no commands to, on, on how to treat people. It is mere recognition that as far as we can tell, we are stuck here on this planet interacting with each other. Um, we can make appeals to game theory and everything else. The only trauma that, that, that is attached to it at all are people are like, oh, well, my parents died and, and secular humanism doesn't tell me that I'm going to see them again in an afterlife and that really hurts me. <coughs> but it's not secular humanism or the fact of reality that's doing the hurting. It's the false uh, hope that was put there by a religion in the first place. If if religion hadn't said you're going to see all your loved ones again in an afterlife, then you would have never assumed that that's the case. You would have just been, oh, they're gone. I, I wish I'd have treated them better then. Sure. I don't know. We've got uh, at least three calls that we're going to see if we can fit into these last 18 minutes. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, let's start with DJ in Arizona. DJ, we like I mentioned, we are going to try and make things a little bit prompt here, but go ahead and give us, uh, you want to talk about, apparently that you believe in America, atheists and Christians are equally racist and that black rights are being put off to the side by both. Yeah, um, basically because <clears throat> the thing is, like Dave Chappelle made a joke one time saying the only way a black man won't get harassed by the cops is if he's wearing high heels. If he's walking down the street, we get harassed by the police. We get pulled over for no reason. Every other day you see something on the news where a black person getting shot and killed by a cop. And all you guys can argue about is guys, you know, wearing high heels. I mean, come on. It's like, y'all, you, you guys don't even care about what we're going through. Like, I understand people think Obama was the first black president, but he was really the first gay president. That's all he did was help gay people. Yeah, he didn't DJ, help his own DJ, people. okay. <sighs> Sorry, if you don't mind. DJ, your assertions about what we believe or what we do or don't care about are wrong. Uh, now, if you want to make the claim that it is the case that most, especially, you're, I, I assume here you're saying specifically white atheists, because it's definitely not a quality of our atheism. Otherwise, you would have to argue then that uh, an atheist organization like Black Nonbelievers is also equally racist to Christians. But if, if you want to make the argument that white atheists at large, and maybe even the people on this channel don't take enough anti-racist mm -hmm. action, that might even be true. However, it may also be the case that I would assert that pretty much all of us aren't doing enough for every cause and seeing to being helpful in one place. Again, I am a queer man. So yes, of course, queer issues uh, tend to take the forefront of my mind means we don't care about the uh -huh. other pl places. It's just sort of plainly fallacious. However, well, two things. One, I'm definitely open to the idea that I'm not doing enough anti-racist stuff and, and should do more and could do more. Uh, and I also, I've floated it several times in the past, if we could find the right people to do it and make a way to make it work, that we could partner up with groups like Black Nonbelievers for a specific Black Issues show related to humanism and atheism. My second assertion to you is, uh, it is my belief, you might disagree, that, uh, I should say it is my belief affirmed by several of the organizations like the one I've mentioned that one of the greatest oppressive forces facing people of color in America is in fact Christianity. Uh, and therefore, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And therefore I agree when I Christianity fight Christianity for queer issues, I, Christianity was forced on us, though. it was forced on us. That's the difference. 
That's the thing. That's yeah. what that's what Europeans do. They've been doing this from the beginning. They'll tell us one thing is true, and then years later come back and tell us, oh, it was, we were wrong. So, so I mean, DJ, are you agreeing? Are, are you even, ag- even COVID-19? For example, I lost three uncles that had massive heart attacks after getting the vaccination. Matt, the same thing happened to Matt, and he, he acts like it didn't happen. Nobody's even talking about COVID no more. It was bullshit DJ, from the beginning. DJ, you guys DJ, no, 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 no. Okay, DJ, you're a conspiracy DJ. theorist who is now making statements about me and my health that is that is factually, factually, factually fucking incorrect. Factually, factually no, fucking I incorrect. I did not have a yeah, fucking... DJ, we're having to mute you. All right, DJ, I'm muting you, and I you're going to shut up, and you're going to listen to me, or you're going to go away. First of all, when you say stupid stuff like Obama wasn't the first black president, he was the first gay president because that's who he helped. Okay, now you're actually talking about what somebody is is based on who they're helping. Oh, you hung up. Run I, away. Yeah, I don't care. Uh, yeah, it, based Run on away, the- you little fucking coward, because I did not have a heart attack after being vaccinated, and I've never had COVID. My heart attacks were due to something else. You are a conspiracy theorist right. who, once you get your grips on something that you think is true, just run with it. Oh, I had three uncles that had heart attacks, and Matt had a heart attack, but nobody talks about it. You guys don't talk about this. I talk about a great many things, and I have. Uh, I've had Mendisa on this show and other people as well, and we've talked about race matters as it relates to atheism. If you want to assert that atheists are just as racist as Christian, you need to identify individuals because, A, Hashtag not all atheists, hashtag not all Christians, but there's nothing within atheism. There is no doctrine, no tenet, nothing about it that actually promotes or supports any idea of valuing one race over another. Do I spend enough time talking about race relation issues? Nope, absolutely not. I've got my areas of expertise and I focus on those. One of them is about science and skepticism. And when you march in with a bunch of conspiracy theorists bullshit and make false claims about my health issues, you shame yourself, sir, not us. Yeah, the the, the thing that I, I was expecting to get to, but of course we got the hang up on too, was from the sound of the way things were positioned, I suspect DJ is welcome to try and come back and call maybe another time and correct me that DJ isn't just sure. upset about race issues taking a backseat to something, but that he is perceiving them as taking a backseat to things he doesn't agree with our problems. I suspect there is a bitterness toward trans people, as he made, as he made the references to Dave Chappelle, uh, uh, that he doesn't think the current trans genocide, I'll use the term, I know it's, I know it's uh, uh, controversial too, that the current trans genocide that's being faced uh, is as serious an issue as race issues. Uh, and, and whether or not you can measure if one is more serious than the other, to say stop all the things you're doing or my perception of your actions, which by the way, I don't know, because he does, DJ doesn't know our individual contribu- contributions to anything, uh, uh, but uh, my perception of what you're not doing betrays your feelings or motivations about things. And it's it's one of those things. Of course, I would be happy to. And by the way, I think every time we've had somebody from a black non-believing organization and I've hosted with them, one of the questions I've asked is, what aren't we doing that we should be? Outreach yeah. is hard for the atheist community to black people. Straight up, it's hard to do. Yeah. How do we it's do also, it? It's also hard. To, to reach out to the Hispanic community. You, Jimmy and I can't risk looking like white saviors. So we can't run around to the, to the African-American or the Hispanic portions of town knocking on doors. Uh, hey, would you like to come not believe in Jesus with us? Um, but what we can do, and which we do, is we not only provide access to our platforms, to organizations who are working on those issues and working towards them, um, countless times over the last 20 years. Um, am I doing enough? No, probably not. But I'm not doing enough on, on 25 other issues as well. Um, but if you want to call in and present people with factual information and present people with resources on how they can, how they can help, how they can get involved, how, can, how they can all be better at standing up in opposition to racism, please do so. But don't do it by coming in to make... Uh, vaguely homophobic or transphobic uh, language about how the only time they're going to care is if you're wearing high heels. Um, uh, All you're doing is showing your bigotry and your bias. And that doesn't help anybody. I get it. Um, You have probably way more righteous anger and righteous indignation 
than I will ever have. But that doesn't mean that you are being a rational actor, and it doesn't mean that we are wrong. I'm sorry that you decided to make a bunch of questionable statements that probably would have gotten most anybody else banned. I think you got a pass for longer um, than the average cishet white guy would get for saying similar things. Yeah. But the second you start trying to use my health issue as if it fits into your bullshit narrative about vaccinations and coronavirus, you lost. You yeah. lost any goodwill. You lost anybody, any reasonable actor here because, A, you are factually wrong. I did not have a heart attack after getting vaccinated. I have not knowingly had a heart attack after being vaccinated. That's simply not true. All what I had was open heart surgery, a triple bypass because of heart attacks that I had before COVID and because I'm diabetic and because I was overweight and because I didn't eat and write and take my medication and because I was uninsured and untreated for almost five years, putting my own health on the line repeatedly to work for free for a nonprofit organization that continues to profit from or make money from what I did because it's the mission that matters. And if you wanna come in here and try to lecture me on mission, you're gonna lose every fucking time, but you're gonna lose even quicker when you lie about my health condition and try to prop it up uh, towards your conspiracy. The irony being there's literally what you just touched on, you don't have to jump to conspiracy for literal issues that face the black community, that Matt, for not having access to insurance and health care, which systemically is true in America, black people do not have access as uh, not all, but obviously at large don't have access to good quality insurance and good quality health care because of the systems in place. Uh, and that like Matt, Matt almost got killed by it. And it does kill disproportionately black people. And not to mention that if black people even report, uh, I don't know if you've all seen the statistics on black women basically being told to go home and take a Tums when it turns out they're having a heart attack uh, and shit like that. There actually are systemic issues you could have appealed to Matt's exper health experiences with where he can empathize very greatly with because he similarly didn't have access to those things and it almost killed him. I, I just think it's, I, I don't know, it's wild. And I know that the future call it's, that we're going to get- much. The future call we're going to get is I'm calling because a few months ago, a black person called in to tell you that you weren't being anti-racist enough and you told him to shut up and hung up on him. Uh, that will be the call we get in the future uh, with zero representation of the conversation that actually happened. We're not, anyway, we're not doing enough on women's issues either. Yeah, no shit. There's, there's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, there's probably only time for one more call. I think a couple more calls are attempting to line up right now, uh, but this, this one will probably be our last one after which- I want this call. I was going to say, I'm headed to R and Ra's channel after this uh, to read the Book of Mormon. So we're going to try and close as close to five as we can. Uh, and there will be an auto read. Let's but let's Chris in Illinois, you are on the line. I'm excited. Hey, Chris, let's get Hello, started. Chris. All right. Um, I, I just have, it, it shouldn't take too long, but. Um, sure. Um, should, should I start off for you? Yeah, I'm go, sorry. go, go, go and go just quickly. Go. Just start about All right, the heat. Right. So, all right, all right, yes. So there's a phenomenon where I will pray for unbelievers because I'm a Christian, right? And uh, they'll, I'll pray for them to feel God's presence. And I'm not saying it always works. But on the ones that it uh, does work on, they'll say they feel a heat come over their body, just going up and down it. And I'm curious how an atheist, from your perspective, how you would explain that, as well as why is it consistent among those people, like saying they feel the same thing? Well, you, you just said it doesn't work all the time, and then you said it's consistent. Which is it? No, no. What I, sorry, I'm not being clear. What I'm saying is when people feel something, they feel a heat. That's what they say they feel. Why are they, those who do feel something, feel a heat? Okay, what, what testing like, have we done to we verify? What, what testing have we done to verify how often it happens and what, what they're reporting? Uh, how do we demonstrate that it's real? Now, I have been in church as a believer and as a non-believer. Um, I have felt mm -hmm. things while I was a believer. Um, have you ever felt warm when it wasn't warm? Um, probably. Have you ever felt flushed, like when you get nervous and you blush? Yeah, yes, yes, sure. 
and and so your body heats you up a little bit like physically you can measure it like when you get mm-hmm. nervous or, or whatever else you, you you flush your cheeks will turn red your body is warming up that is a, a, it's something that your brain is doing to your body okay mm-hmm. so when so, you so pray you you would when, argue when, hang on when you pray and okay. someone has that response how do you tell the difference between their brain just warming their body up in the same way that happens when you flush from embarrassment and a god making them feel warmth how do you tell the difference between those two i guess at times yeah they, they could mistake it for that i, I was just, I, more I'm just so saying, curious why it happens so often on. why okay oh, gosh if you can't tell the difference between when they're flushing because of their brain and when they're flushing because of the Holy Spirit, how could you ever conclude that it ever occurs because of the Holy Spirit? How do you know it's not always just their brain? That's a good point. So I should probably re- reject all of their testimonies because it all could possibly be no, that, correct? No, no, that's not what I said. In the same uh, way that you potentially rush to a false conclusion, now you're misrepresenting. All I'm saying is you have no mechanism to tell the difference between your brain is making you feel hot as a psychological result of this interaction, or God is making you feel hot as a result of that, that doesn't tell you what conclusion to reach. There are more questions to ask. Here's the other one. If Why would God present itself in a way that is indistinguishable from your brain doing stuff? If God wants to make you feel a certain way, why wouldn't he make it easy for you to tell for sure that he's doing this as opposed to your brain. I'm not sure. I don't know either. Thank yeah, Chris, you. Chris might actually be engaging pretty honestly here. Chris, I suspect the answer to no, your I, question, I though, is uh, is the same, is basically we could ask it in this way. Why does that same uh, experience of warmth happen when Mormons pray for someone to feel God and then Muslims pray for someone to feel God and then Hindus because you're not the first person who's it, told it me this happen. story it's it, and oh. it seems to be that conditionally in fact there are non-God versions of it like when you sit with somebody in the hospital and they're experiencing pain and you try to do breathing exercises with them and mental exercises with them to sort of put them in a meditative state that can help quiet down all the pain receptors and people describe a feeling of warmth there's also certain uh, uh, we'll call them hypnotic techniques, though I know that word hypnosis has a lot of weight to it, so I don't I don't mm-hmm. want to stay in there too long. Uh, but the same sort of thing, where you get people into a certain mental and emotional state, and and to ask why is it always heat is a bit like asking why most often when I scratch somebody with a razor blade do they feel pain? Because that is the common response to that type of stimulus. It's it's really as simple as that. Is the most likely explanation. If you are sitting with somebody and they, and you, by the way, you're talking about praying. So you're taking this moment of silence and you're telling people to search for something in their head, thereby putting them in a type of meditative state. Meditation, literally, you can do it in seconds. If you literally just think about controlling your breathing, you're meditating. And then you're acting as though you, what you think is you are projecting an act of compassion or an act of like, okay, I'm trying to send this to you. Search yourself for it while you're in this semi-meditative state. And then they have the common response to a compassionate, peaceful, semi-meditative state. It's not a matter of like rejection or, or whatever necessarily. I'm surprised you find this compelling at all when it is so easy to figure out you could have done this with like genies or just go to different places where culture is expecting the source of that warmth to be something else, the culture there, and they're going to feel that warmth over that. It, it It's... I'm more surprised you found it compelling at all. And I, I suppose it has to do with sort of our own experience and how significant we feel our experiences, despite the amount of input and variance we can find from the billions of people who have ever been born. Uh, to me, it's when I hear the story, I just think not, not why should you accept it? Why did you even begin to find it uh Interesting, I suppose. Well, we've got to we got to make this quiz just, quickly. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I mean that's that's All confirmation right. bias. What 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 you what you said? I mean, I was kind of surprised. I assumed you guys would say it's like placebo, and I was thinking, well, no, because I'm not telling them to feel this way. I'm just saying in Jesus' name, 
uh, God re- reveal yourself. But yeah, that is an interesting answer, and I will consider that. Good. Awesome. Chris, call back but, next week, would you? Let's talk more. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. God bless. Thanks, Chris. God bless. Hey, that was... <laughs> how dare you right at the end uh, That's uh i know it was com- it, it wasn't it wasn't malicious it was habit uh anything you want to say before we go no i'm jimmy snow this stuff is to do. matt dillahunty we have an awesome lineup of shows we'll have thumbnails up tonight uh go hit set reminders on the ones you don't want to miss otherwise head over to rn raw's channel with me right now and we're going to read the book of mormon on his series joseph smith uh, links to everything down below, patreon.com slash call the line so we can get that chess tournament going. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. See y'all later. Thank you. Good night.